it's official. Grand Design has finally entered into the Class C slash B plus market, and this is their first RV ever. Let's take a look. Hey there, I'm Rose. And I'm Dan. And, and we, we are, are the Half-Ass half -ass Travelers. We're here at the South Florida Fairgrounds in West Palm Beach, Florida at La Mesa's RV semi-annual RV show. And we have a real treat for you because yesterday they obtained the first Class C by Grand Design and it's right behind me. So as we see it, you will see it. We've never seen it before. It's very exciting. This is the Lineage Series M 25FW. And just from looking at the outside, I can tell you it looks different. Look at those colors, the dark gray with the black. We love the graphics. This is really aggressive styling. And look at these lights underneath. We don't usually start our reviews on the outside, but I think we're gonna start this one on the outside because this is so cool. All accent lighting. Yeah, this is so neat. Rose, I think I'm gonna make a command decision. Let's start on the outside and we'll keep the inside. We'll keep you in suspense. All right, speakers, Rockford Fosgate speakers on the outside. Rockford Fosgate used to be the bee's knees in, in stereo systems. They're really good quality. Rose's favorite feature, the outdoor TV, and it's a pretty good size Jensen TV. It's really nice. Now these doors are pretty significantly weighted. Wow, that is a solid, substantial door, and it's got the nice locks. And it's not just a single lock, it's a double lock to help protect your TV investment. This is marked propane, let's see if they're lying. Nope, propane tank, right under there with the fills. And then a small storage space underneath. I'm trying to see what that is, is that an inverter? It's your head. It's my head. <laughs> I can't tell if that's the inverter or not. Here's this, the headpiece for the Rockford Fosgate stereo. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of having this on the outside exposed to the weather. Ours is just inside the door and I could see it, you know, that might be a, a better spot for it. I don't know, only time will tell. You've got your water heater exhaust and then a propane fast connect. So you can put your grill right here at the back. Now, I have an issue here. This is a very flimsy plastic door. We don't like to see these plastic doors on the outside because if this breaks off, you're never gonna know it's gone and then you're gonna end up driving down the road with just this showing. So yeah, not big fans of the plastic door. They probably could have gone with something a little bit more substantial. There's a 120 GFI CI plug and then a pretty good sized storage compartment. I don't feel any power in there, but it's nice. Uh, it's plastic lined. All right, let's go around the back. Did I forget the awning? Oh, see, Rose, this is why we're a team. Yes, how about this awning with the LED lights? And it runs the entire length of the coach. And what is this up here? That's a vent. That is a vent for the inside stove, I bet. And I like those little bubble windows. Yeah. Those look cool from the outside. All right, now we can go around back. All right, we have found the slide. All right, this is a single slide unit. It's on the driver's side and it is a pretty large one. Anytime you see a cutout like this in the slide, what this tells me is that there is probably a bed on this half and maybe a, a couch or something on that half. It's uh, not, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there's no Murphy bed in there. Usually when we see this, it's because there's a bed there. Um, here's a vent, venting for the Aquago, the Truma Aquago. It's all right there, just access if you need to make repairs. And another storage container, actually this is not a storage container. I guess you could have storage in there, but there's also your fresh tank, your black tank, your gray tank. Those are all the, where all the drains are. Water fills, quick connect for your outdoor shower. One good thing about having the cutout here in the slide is that it's a little bit easier to access the area underneath this half. And Access as you will, because this is a substantially large, let's see if I can turn the light on, there we go. 
substantially large storage compartment and it looks like you could maybe access something from the inside. Now we'll, when we get inside, we'll take a look at that. You've got your shore power connection here. I'm gonna keep from bashing my head. Again, very large doors. Here on the slide, we've got a storage compartment, rather large storage compartment. And as you can see, there is a light in there. It's just not on at the moment. I'm gonna take a knee and we come down. There's another large storage compartment under there along with some of the electrical. And then in front of that is an Onan 3600 LP generator right behind the driver's door. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but there are cameras. I'm sure there's cameras on both sides and the rear. That is huge when you're driving something this large down the road. It's huge to be able to see those cars before you go bashing into them. One thing we noticed uh, on the driver's side is it's got this substantial running board kind of step to get in and out. That's a really nice feature. Now it looks like the paint is chipping here, but that's not paint chip. That's just a plastic uh, protector that they've got over it. So that is not paint chipping. It is metal and it is very nicely painted. On the passenger side, you've got the same uh, running board there on the side and also the same camera here. And now for what we've all been waiting for, the big reveal. First of all, look at the window. That's different. I like that kind of just very uh, tight. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let's try that again. Okay, so the doors may uh, stick a little. We've had ours stick a little bit. There we go. Maybe it just needs to be worked in. This is a brand new unit after all. Look at this door, this is different. Um, first of all, it's got a shade. It's already got an advantage on our Wayfarer because our Wayfarer doesn't have a shade in the window on the door. Figure that one out. Um, but yeah, it's got the uh, open mechanism here, which is a, just a plastic thing, but it's also got these storage areas and storage straps. Um, it's a plastic door. Nah, it's just interesting. All right, we're gonna go up the uh, retractable step here. And what's under here? Let's see, what's under the floor? Oh. Okay, just like our Wayfarer, this is where they're hiding the batteries. Those appear to be lithium batteries. Very nice, and also inverter, generator, hydro pump. It's got all of the uh, electrical right there, very easy to access. All right, I'm going in. All right, so we've got all, a bunch of controllers here down by the floor. You've got the battery switch, the entry step lockout, a light, which just helps some light switches, uh, the leveling system. That's a, that's a automatic leveling system. That's nice to have. I can't see what that is down there. We also have a fire extinguisher right on the right. We want to talk about these windows real quick. Uh, the way they do their windows are very similar to some of the Winnebago, but you can see this won't open unless you push this button in. So these have a, actually a locking mechanism to open it. And also these awning style windows open a pretty good distance. And as you can see, these, these windows go out a pretty good distance and they go up a pretty good distance. But one of the things, one of the features we really like is that on top, they've got a screen. On bottom, they've got the blackout shade. So if you wanna keep your window open and you wanna keep your screen open, you can bring this blackout shade up as far as you want and maintain your privacy. So you, people just walking around outside can't see in your RV, but your window's still open, which is a really good design choice by Grand Design. Also, as you come out here, Rose, if you back up a bit, if you look on the roof of the RV, you'll see that there's a roof rack that circles, it looks like it circles the entire roof. Now we're not sure what the purpose of that is because there's no ladder on the RV. So uh, we're kind of interested to, to see how that space would be utilized. Uh, I, if it is storage up there, would you have to carry your own ladder and where would you put it? So that's, those are questions. I mean, there is a lot of storage out here on the outside, but those are questions that we would have. First thing we notice when we come in is this resilient Shaw floors sign. Now this looks a lot like the woven floors that we saw in the Airstream models. However, this is not woven. It just has that look. It's very, it's very smooth. It's not, there is no place for dirt to get in between, which is nice to know. You can see the access down to the driver's compartment. 
is very easy. This is the standard Mercedes chassis, although we do like the fact that it has very comfortable chairs. This is a soft leather, and the best part is they're a light color, so they're not gonna get over hot when the sun is beating in through the windshield. That's nice. Everything up here is standard Mercedes. It's got the four cylinder diesel engine. Uh, it's got a little bit of storage over top of the visors and that's pretty standard as well. This has a sleeping area bed over top of the driving compartment. This piece just comes down here and that'll give you a nice sleeping area. There is a, I don't know if you can see it, there is a reading light up here on both sides and storage spaces for your phones and whatnot. This is plastic, uh, but it's, it's pretty sturdy. You've got an AC vent for this bed. That is cool. The 120 volt outlets, light switches, USB-A and USB-C ports. You could tell this is a brand new unit because they switched and put some USB-C ports in there. And then this looks like a whole shell over top. This is all plastic. So this is one of our favorite features in the overhead bed. Oh, I love this window. We don't really use our overhead bed, but man, we would definitely use this skylight all the time. It will bring so it brings so much light in here. Really, really nice feature to have. Now, again, you're always concerned having stuff like windows or whatever carved out of the body of the RV because whenever there's something carved into the body, you run the risk of having leaks. And if anybody knows about leaks, it's us. Yeah, yeah. Rose, Rose will tell you that. So we definitely, you definitely don't want leaks. But other than that, we really like the amount of light that that brings in. Uh, the Grand Design has a, this one has a, a pair of recliners. And what we like about this even more than our Wayfair is the fact that this side window in the slide and the windows behind create a little bit of cross ventilation, but also uh, you don't feel like you're in a cave you feel like you're outside because you have a window right next to you and you can see out. That is huge. We didn't think when we, were, when we got our Wayfarer that that would make much of a difference, but I got to tell you that it does. Sometimes you feel like you're kind of closed off from the outside world. One of the things we really liked about Airstream trailers, because that was the other thing we were looking at, is that there were so many windows that you felt like you were bringing the outside in. And this is a feature we would love to have in our Wayfarer. If you're, li if you're listening, Tiffin, uh, that's something that we would like. Uh, we do we do like our recliners. These are nice, but I think that we are more partial to the recliners we have. This is leather, and we kind of prefer the uh, Micro. the microfiber. So that's just something different. But that takes up the majority of the slide. We like these lock locks on the cabinets. Always good to have these small cabinets with locks. And this. This cabinet runs the entire length. It's just got three doors on it. And then you've got this cabinet here. And you see how the lights come on when you open the, the door. That's a great feature. And these are soft clothes. And they said this isn't called tongue and groove, that this is called something else, but you see what it is. That is some high quality drawers right there. And you can tell by, by uh, when you're opening and closing these drawers that this was built very well. Down here, you've got even more drawers, all soft closing. Really nice system, we like that. Okay, let's go around to the kitchen. Let's talk about this kitchen because it has something that Rose loves. Look at this extra counter space. Why isn't this in every coach? Every coach should have this if there's room on the side. And you can still put your panels underneath. We can access them. We don't mind pulling up the table to access the panel underneath. Uh, or even in here, they've got the 120 underneath, the 120 outlet. Oh, while I'm thinking of it though, right here, remember I talked about the head unit for the radio? There is one inside also, in addition to the controller for all the systems here. You, uh, you've got the controller for the radio inside and out. Okay, so that's not so bad. Let's talk about this sink, because this has a feature that we've never seen before in an RV. This is a first for us, and it's not just this change of the, you know, this little bit of a feature in the sink that makes it look different, and the square uh, drain. That's not it. And it's not even this cutting board here, which is nice that it's sitting in the sink. That's not it either. Look at this. 
That is a glass washer. Anybody who's worked in a bar knows what this is. You put the glass here to drain, but here there's little holes in this that spray water up into the glass and it spins and it will, and it will clean your glasses. That is so neat to see in an RV. I don't think we've ever seen that before. Uh, up underneath, you've got the sponge drawer. It's like a huge sponge drawer, really wide. And I love all these locking drawers. Yeah. And they've all, I see these all have them too. The dovetail joint. Dovetail? Is that what they are called? Dovetail, yeah. yeah. Dovetail. Not, we call, used to call them tongue and groove. Somebody yelled at us. I think they're called dovetail joints, but man, they're very high quality. Here's the spot underneath the sink where we would probably have our garbage can, among other things. But yeah, these things spin. You see that? Look at this. They spin to keep them from locking when you don't want to lock them. That's pretty cool too. Okay, up over the sink, we've got a t television set. Now this doesn't pop up or anything. It doesn't look like there's any storage behind it uh, other than to access the back of the TV. Uh, but it's still nice to have it there right across from the recliners. Large storage compartment up over the cooktop and look at these hinges. What yeah. A vent. Yes, we saw that from the outside. Remember we were looking oh. at it and we're like, what is that? There's a vent out there. Yep, here it is. Wow. Yeah, that would be a nice feature to have. Um, also, we've got a dual burner LP cooktop and a decent size microwave. I think it's a convection oven also. And then more storage. It's not too deep. I don't know if that's pot and pan deep, but it's pretty good. Not bad. We'll take it. And then you've got the refrigerator over here. Now this is one we have. I don't think we've seen this one much. Press to open. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You just have, okay, I see. Look, see that? Yes, this is the freezer. Ooh, nice it's nice and deep. cold. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump nice in there, deep. get out of this Florida heat. Nice. Yeah, you push up and then open. See, it wasn't too hard to figure out. Even, even our half-assed selves could figure it out. That's really nice. Great system there. It's everything's digital. All right, and then you've got an airflow crisper airflow control where you can change the amount of airflow down into your crisper. That's a neat little feature that you've got there. Pretty sure this is a a uh, compressor fridge. I can't really see it. Uh, let's see. I, I don't know. We'll have to look it up. If we can figure out what it is, we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, really neat design. We like that. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Because here it is. We are t usually not fans of this pedestal, pedestal bed. All right, that's for lack of a better word. That's what we're going to call it. The, where the mattress flips up and then you can uh, access the storage underneath, which is a lot of storage. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot of nice storage. Uh, but in order to close the slide, you got to flip up the bed. It's not ideal. It's not bad though, because look at the thickness of this mattress. This is a comfy bed. And look at the headboard. It's all, there's no window there, which is fine because you've got windows on the side or at least this window on the side. No window there, obviously, because it's going into the recliner, but there is something else over here. I don't know if you can see it, Rose. There is a storage compartment here. Let me see if I can take that. Yeah, there's a storage compartment around there on that side. That's Rose's side of the bed. Hey. Well, you can have the other side if you wanted. Uh, yeah, so it's nice to have that storage there. Overhead storage, this goes all the way through. I can't really reach to grab these. Like the lights above the cabinets. Yeah, this is nice. You see how spring loaded they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the, the same reading lights that we have up there in the forward compartment. Oh, these lights. Dual lights. Oh, shoot, you're talking about the under lighting here? Yeah, it's really nice. This is beautiful. Really like how they did it. I just, I don't know, we prefer a Murphy bed. Mm -hmm. We just do, we just like to get it out of the way. And then we could have had a couch here. So uh, I think, you know, this is just one of their designs. It's very possible that they might come out with a design that includes a Murphy bed. Uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see. In the back here, we've got a huge amount of storage. Look at this. That is a huge wardrobe. Really nice. Like that it locks. Oh, automatic, automatic lights over here in the corner. 
And there's also power in here. There's an HDMI plug in here. If you wanted to put another TV in here, I guess you could. Um, yeah, I, I haven't quite got the knack of locking these. I'm, I'm learning though. And then we've got another drawer here. And some more drawers here. And here, lots of clothing storage, a ton of storage in this unit. All right, and the TV over here, right over the bed. That's nice because you got the TV in the bedroom. You've also got a TV way over there in the kitchen. This is the part now where I think we I've started to get to the point where this RV design may not be for us. And the reason being is we are not usually big fans of the corner bathroom. And just like we're not fans of the pedestal bed, this corner bathroom, I, I think we're gonna be disappointed. But I will tell you this, this door is cool. I like this design. It's beautiful. I love this doorknob. It is just so interesting that we haven't seen before. The only issue is it's a little tight in here. A little bit tight. It does not have a shower the size of our Wayfarer shower. It's tight. I mean, it's definitely doable. This is the standard rectangular shower pan shower. We love this shower door. We have the same shower door in ours and it is awesome because it's no mess. We love this wall. It's just the look of this with the shower wand and you can also put it here. So you can have it in either place. Really nice, we like the shelving. We like the color contrast, like the drains even. It's beautiful. The porcelain toilet is in a great position. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Plenty of knee room, uh, with, even with the door closed. You don't feel like you're in a cave. Um, and you've got the elbow rest here and your phone rest. There's some uh, storage space underneath. You getting all this? That is a lot of storage space. And there's your hot and cold water valves right in the back of the uh, uh, storage, easy to get to if you develop a leak, and we know a lot about leaks. Um, the sink in the bathroom, this is plenty. All right, we don't need a large sink in the bathroom. It's got a simple push button drain. We like the hot and cold, we like this faucet, very modern. It's got a big mirror, rather large storage for medicines and whatnot. Also, I like this towel rack. You, see, you ever seen a square towel rack before? Very neat. Also, one thing you gotta keep in mind is these switches here, having the water pump switch back here is very helpful. A lot of times we forget to turn the water pump on and we're like, ah, gotta go all the way up to, to turn on the water pump. Nope, not here. All right, up into, the, up into the roof, there is a skylight here in the shower. There's also a fan here right above the toilet. Always useful to have a fan above the toilet and the towel holders. Hey, look, somebody's trying to sneak in here. Hey. hey Who is this guy? That's Big Riggs from La Mesa RV. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's talk about some things in the ceiling of the RV because there are vents and lights and little doodads everywhere in here, including these vents here that, that change the direction and flow of the ducted air conditioning. You've got another fan here. So you've got one in the bathroom and one here. That's nice. The AC unit right here, the intake, but that intake's not blowing because the ducts are all right here. And it's a very easy control system to operate these ducts. You've got your wine guard system. That's nice to have. Also up here in the ceiling, it looks like these are speakers. And if that's the case, they are in the perfect spot to provide you the surround sound experience to your TV watching, which is directly behind Rose's head. I can see the TV right there. It's beautiful. This is a really nicely thought out design coach. Uh, there's a couple things we don't like about it. The pedestal bed, the uh, corner bathroom, there aren't our specific, to our specific liking, but if, they, if uh, Grand Design were to come out with a Murphy bed unit with the rear bath, sort of similar to our Wayfair RW, 25RW, we would definitely consider the Grand Design. Now we know that Grand Design has been having some issues, at least in, the, in media, they've been having issues with some of their travel trailers. Um, and you may have concerns, quality concerns, but I can tell you that from what we're seeing here, it looks like they are using quality, build, quality products in their build 
especially in the drawers and cabinets. They seem very high quality to us. Um, I guess time's going to tell to see how the reliability holds up. But it's always interesting to see a manufacturer putting out a brand new or, or you know, dipping their feet into a brand new uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, going into a different direction in the RV market. You know, they're trying to break in. It's a very popular model, these kind of small C, I guess a lot of people call them B pluses, um, but they are, uh, it, it's, it's a very popular area to be with the RVs right now. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Overall, we're very impressed with the lineage. For, the fir for a first time RV, this is checking off a lot of the boxes. There's a lot of little innovative details that they're using in their, uh, in their Class C that uh, you can tell they've been paying attention to what people want. You, there's a lot of influences in there from some of the other manufacturers. We see some Winnebago in certain places. We see some Pleasure Way in some places. Uh, everything down to the dovetail cabinets and the locking mechanisms on the doors Everything seems pretty high quality. The Rockford Fosgate system, that's always good. Um, there's a lot of technology in this RV, and that's evident everywhere you turn. So if you're in the market for a small class C slash B plus, you definitely want to take a look at the Grand Design Lineage Series M. We hope you enjoyed that video. What do you say? Like, what he said. <laughs> what he said. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> See, they know what we're doing here. If you enjoyed the video, we hope you'll consider subscribing. And give us a thumbs up because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're subscribed, make sure you ring that bell for notifications. You'll be told every time we post a new video. Is he sneaking up on me again? And if you want the best salesman, it's Todd Bauer. And if you want to see another good channel, go look at mine, uh, Little Disney. He's a pet squirrel, and he's an RV pet squirrel, so check him out. You see, shameless marketing here at the La Mesa RV Show. And Bob Miller might have some, some words with you about claiming to be the best salesperson. <laughs> we like to have a lot of fun at these shows. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and we can't wait to put out the next one.